Hi everyone, Mamie here with another card today. This stamp set is from Michael's that I got on clearance. And I lost the name of it, but you can use this technique with just any sentiment that you have. Here's the stamp set. And I'll try to look it up and find what the name was. But here I'm just marking off the area because I always get out of camera, I always get out of range. So I'm just masking off the other side of the card. This is just, um, I'm putting part of the, the first layer is going to be on the card itself. And these are stencils that I made with this stamp set and die set that I got at Hobby Lobby. It's by um, Stephanie Barn. I don't know how to say her last name, Bernard, maybe. And I was just cutting out a bunch of dies and then I whenever I was done I just put some Mod Podge over the front and back so I could use it as a stencil. I think I've used it like four times and it's still working good so I'm using peacock feathers and mm, raspberry distress inks. I have to look up, I know it's something raspberry. I don't have it in front of me of course. So here I am just inking and blending. So if you're going to make a stencil, make sure that you use the Mod Podge or it won't work. Or you can use like gel medium. Same thing. I try. I bought this new, I don't know if it's new, it's new to me, this new Mod Podge that's satin finish. It looks really nice. So, because the glossy is too glossy for me and then the matte just doesn't have anything to it but this satin is really pretty pretty finish <coughs> picked raspberry I think is the name yeah that's right Tim Holtz distress inks so here I'm just cleaning it off and I made another stencil with just the leaves and now I'm going to use mustard seed and orange marmalade wait no I'm using the I'm on the peacock feathers for the leaves on this one but then on the next layer I'm going to use mustard seed mustard seed and orange marmalade so here I'm just going right over the top of the last stencil it doesn't really matter it'll look pretty either way I'm just trying to decide how many leaves I want This was a really fun card. I don't, I made like five in a row because I was having so much fun with the stencil and it came out really pretty. So stick around and see it to the finish because there's a whole bunch of different techniques. And layers are always fun. So it's got three layers. Here we're working on the second layer. And I'm just going to do the leaves on the second layer. And there's the orange marmalade and the mustard seed. And I'm using the Tim Holtz round blending tool, which is fantastic. And I'm just using regular cardstock. For this technique I could have used watercolor paper but it was working fine on this regular cardstock so it's a little bit cheaper this way too so and I a quick tip I noticed from using those blending tools that if you don't have enough ink on your blending tool when you first start using it it will leave blending lines so after like I don't know 10 uses of one pad one one blending sponge the uh, 
sponge is very saturated and it won't leave those little rings. So maybe just get some scratch paper and, and ink your blending tool really good. And then keep blending and, and with it on the scratch paper until your sponge is really saturated and then you won't get those little circles. So that's a good tip right there. I had to find that out the hard way because I kept getting frustrated with all those little rings that it would leave behind. But now I'm not getting them because the sponges are nice and saturated. So here we're just using the gold embossing. I used the Versamark around the outside. Just dabbing it in. And I didn't use um, I didn't use a static bag because I'm just, I always forget. So I'm just having to clean it up now a little bit. And I'm using just recollections gold embossing powder works just fine it's probably better to do all the gold embossing before you do the inking that way you don't have to wait for the ink to dry before you do the embossing but I just kind of did it in a in bunch of different intervals some of them I did right and some of them I just did out of order so you just you have to make sure your ink is dry before you do any embossing so here we're using that really cute stamp that I just love I think I got it at Michael's the whole little stamp set for like $2.99 and it's really cute and it's a pretty good stamp set it it inks really well and I was happy with it so always check your Michael's clearance section Or go to Tuesday morning. They have a really good little stamp section too. So here I'm just, again, didn't use my static bag. So I'm having to clean it up a little bit. There we go. Nice, pretty, and shiny. So now I'm inking my second layer and I didn't let the ink dry but it didn't cause too much of a problem. It probably would have helped for me to use the static bag but it doesn't end up being too much of a problem. You can use this technique with really any stencils that you have. I The other card that I showed at the beginning was a Tim Holtz stencil. And I just layered the stencil, the same stencil, over and over again. It came out really cute. I really liked that one, but I didn't do the gold embossing on that one. So that's why I didn't do the video for it. But it's really cute. I did the embossing on the front, but I didn't do it all over the sides, which is what a technique that I really love, and I wanted to, to show a video of that. Now I'm doing the, the card base itself, which is a little more tricky. To do the top part, you just need to close the, um, close the card and then do the top part. And the ink on this one was still really wet, so it kind of got all over the ink, the flowers and the leaves, so I just had to wipe that off. So that's what I'm doing off camera here, is realizing that I had a lot of powder left over on my leaves and my flowers, so I'm wiping that off. I could have just cut the part out, but it was the only part that was kind of dragging, so I just left it. So here we're heating. And this cardstock was, I think it's only 90 pound, except for the card base. Um, I think the cardstock I used was, I think it was 90 pound. I don't usually use such a thin cardstock well what I mean 60 pound what am I saying 60 pound which is pretty flimsy 
but I just had it in my stash, so I figured it would be a good example, but I would definitely use at least 90 pound cardstock for this technique just because it really gives it the depth that it needs. And then here I'm using Fun Foam because it's cheaper and it works better than putting a bunch of little adhesives, a little adhesive Fun Foams, I mean little adhesive foam. So I'm just puzzling together the fun foam. This is the kind that has the sticky back, which is really, really quite sticky. So I don't ever have any problems with it. This way, if you send it through the mail, it doesn't get as bent up and wonky as it does if you just use foam, little foam squares. And then here I'm using my 3-in-1 glue that I really love. It sticks really fast. The only problem is it's kind of like hot glue. So it has that string of glue that you have to pull off at the end. So here I'm just layering the cards. I mean the um, cardstock. And what's good with that glue is you can kind of manipulate it a little bit until it's perfectly squared. just set an acrylic block on it to squish it down nice and flat and then here's the card thanks for joining me don't forget to hit subscribe